Is he gone? What? It's recording. I'll cut it off, Fancy. Well, oh. you can cut it off, Connor. Uh, right, hi everyone. I hope you're all keeping well. The world's uh, just uh, as crazy place as last time I spoke to you, but thankfully we can go fishing now, which is definitely a bonus. And I just want to say thanks for everyone that's been watching and subscribing. It's been loads of interest, loads of nice comments back, which is always nice to hear. Thank you very much. If you haven't subscribed, do please do so. Uh, really appreciate it. Moving on, uh, just a few couple of videos people have asked me to do and I haven't done them yet, I apologise. I've, I've been lucky and gone back to work a couple of weeks ago, so I was rushing around trying to get my garden finished and then I've been absolutely dead after two months off trying to work again. Um, so I've been sleeping a lot in an evening. Um, yes, people have asked me to, about doing a video how to set up your box and your rollers and everything a couple of people have asked me for that i will get that done as soon as there's a nice evening i can get my box and everything out in the garden when my wife's here so she can hold the camera and follow me around where i put things and why um the other video people have a few couple of people have asked for is pellet waggler and the bomb and, and that sort of fishing um to be honest out of all the methods of fishing at the moment that is the one that I think is evolving most at the moment. There's lots of changes in it at the moment, a few different things. And my setup is nearly there now. I'm nearly thinking, like with the videos I've done for you, I'm happy that everything is perfect. With that, I'm not quite there yet. I'm just, just tinkering with a few things. I don't want to record a video and it, it's not what I think is right. Uh, so I'm just going to get it finished. I've been having to play around after matches and um, let's say give me a couple of weeks It'll all be right. There's something I've learned this weekend needs changing again um, Once I'm a hundred percent happy with it. I will get a video done with it because it's a really interesting topic and let's say it is one that's I Think there's been more focus on different tiny little issues with that recently than there has any other style so um, So yeah, we'll get that done for you Anyway, moving on to today's video, I'm going to do a match report on, on each match for you on the channel, but as I say, I've been really busy. I actually fished my first match last Saturday, and I fished another one at the same venue Friday evening, and then I fished another one at the same venue Saturday again. And it's actually given us a really rare insight into why I would do different methods on different days on the same sort of peg because I've drawn the same peg the first two matches and the peg right next door to it on the third match and they've all been completely different um, so it will be a little bit of a talk about the, the matches but it's more about what I've learned from each one why I've changed for each day because of different conditions and moving forward what I'm going to take out of it because um, the, the venue I've fished is Float Fish Farm it's five mile from home so it's been ideal really well run they've done all the weighing in brilliantly the draw there's been no contact social distance has been followed so it's perfect for me and more importantly three weeks time there is their three-day festival they had the first one last year didn't really even though it's a local venue I didn't really know the venue that well I'll be honest um, it's a st stupid amount of money involved I think the top three overall in the festival take home five grand between them. So it's really worth winning. Last year, I lost out on winning the festival on weight. I dropped a point the second day and um, tied with my good friend, Russ Grimes, who was, was stopping at ours last year. He won it, I was second. So it's really nice to see him win. Um, but I could have got another point and one had three a perfect score and won it i think so i'm trying to spend i've been there a lot since and since i've got back into it with that nearby i'm focusing all my time there or most of my time there i really want to get it perfected it's a very difficult not a difficult venue it's just a bit unique um and i want to be completely uh, in touch with it um so we're going to cover about what um what i'm trying to achieve what i'm trying to learn why i'm choosing different methods and, and just it's 
it's learning learning from your mistakes um doing things for the conditions because i haven't got it right all three matches i'm quite open with that i certainly haven't got it right um and what i'm taking out of it for the festival so that's what we're going to cover um right so we'll go on to the a little bit about the venue i've drawn on the same lake like i say and the same sort of pegs been on two islands lake there which is um there's 34 pegs on it it's, it's a big lake um peg one starts down in the bottom corner in one corner and there is there's no pegs along that back bank to 34 opposite um so they chuck along re along the reed bed and it just goes around in a big loop there's two islands as it suggests um the island starts at about peg three goes up to sort of five to s about six and then there's a gap and then peg eight is the point of the next island which is a flyer it's a really really good peg all those pegs along there from sort of three to eight are pegs i'd always fancy then it goes around into a bowl you can chuck to the island all the way around the bowl it's not so good there generally um and then it works back round and i've drawn the first two matches i've drawn peg 28 and the last match i've drawn 29 next to um you're just into the second island there so you've got feeder chuck to the island um 28 has got trees both sides you've only got like a top kit and a four and you you can't go any further because you, you've got trees um 29 you've got the trees there you've got a bit longer edge you can fish a sort of top five down to a bit of a feature down there um the makeup of the lake it is it's well it's, on these pegs it's really shallow it's hard to get your nets in actually straight away um so you've literally got inches tight to the bank um plumbing up i found 18 inches probably a couple of foot from the bank which seemed perfect and then it just slopes away slopes away and it's really deep it goes off to about 16 or 17 foot you've got that by about 11 meters so it is a, a sharp um slope and then it further out towards the island which is probably 35 meters away it, it shallows right up again to literally nothing um so it's interesting like where you choose to fish what depths um it's it's big carp it's you're fishing full carp they go from anything from sort of two pound up to 20 pound there's a lot of big fish um especially the ones you catch short and down the edge or shallow you catch some big ones shallow sometimes um you can catch on the deck in the deep water like in 15 foot they're smaller fish generally and the same with the feeder there's it's quite often like the two pounders on the feeder um but still good fish to catch winning weights anything from i've won matches there with 80 pound and i've seen 200 pound you, you sometimes need 200 about 180 pounds that sort of weight um this was saturday was the first last saturday was the first match that's been on there um and it had been open for a week it had been full all week with pleasure anglers and it had just been fishing ridiculous everyone even with a full lake um people were catching it up to 500 pound um so we've to be honest before this first match really expected it to be a massive weight day um it was a sellout the whole lake was every peg was in um but i just thought that it was going to fish ridiculous um so i i honestly thought I was going to be revolving around fishing a top five which is sort of six foot deep six and a half foot um with meat that's what i like doing i've been really successful there with meat works really well there um and in the edge and everyone said i'd not drawn where i'd been before everyone said they're really good edge pegs because you've got the trees the, the fish live around them a little bit um but I got to my peg and fish were spawning everywhere and instantly I thought this isn't going to be as good as we thought it was. Um, they didn't spawn all day actually. By the time we started fishing they'd, they'd about moved out. Um, there wasn't the splashing anymore but I, I knew it wasn't going to be as good. It was really, anyone knows, last Saturday was really hot. 25 degrees, 26 degrees. And our bank, um, the other side had got a lovely ripple. Our bank, we hardly had any ripple close in and within half hour of the match starting, it was flat calm to about 18 metres. And then there was a really strong ripple through there, which, as I'll go into in a bit, 
messed up what would have been a good method on the day. Um, setup wise, I'm not going to go into lots of detail. I'll, I'll just go into what I've set up, but I'm not going to go into rigs and everything. They're all things we've covered already. Um, I've set up an edge rig, a heavy edge rig. I will get a video done on edge fishing for carp as well. Um, proper edge gear. Uh, I've set up three rigs for fishing at five meters. Um, a little 4x12, like I said, for fishing through the water. Uh, a 414 just to give it a bit more stability and if the fish are on the deck because it is quite deep um, and the, the back in rig for cat meat and all that sort of stuff and then I planned fishing shallow 13 meters even though we hadn't got any wind on the lake as such on the pole line you were still getting gusts anyone that's been to the fens where we are you'll realize that the slightest bit of wind seems about 100 mile an hour because it's so flat uh, so I planned to fish shallow at 13 metres. I'd got another section out so I could follow them out if I needed to. Again, what I've gone into. Set up three rigs. Well, I set up four. I set a dobbin rig up as well. But I've set up a rig with a long line for, for a foot deep, the two foot deep rig and a deep shallow rig. Um, and then I've set up three rods. Um, I've set up a feeder for chucking over because it is normally good for a few fish. Um, just an open-ended alloy. And then I've set up a bomb and a waggler to fish sort of three quarters over um which onto the shallow bit shallower water where it's sloping up um so that was the, the setup bait wise i took a plenty of eight mil meat there's, you can't fish six mils in there really there's a lot of red and roach and the, they pest you with it um so i always fish eight mils on that loads of eight mil meat some hemp some six and eight mil pellets and a, a few a few two mils for the uh, the method then I've also mixed up a couple of kilos of ground bait for in the edge because I like to fish ground bait and fish meat over it in the edge. It worked, it's worked really well for me there. Um, dead maggots would probably be brilliant, but again, you get red and roached out, so that ruled them out. Um, and to be honest, it's a simple approach. I've set up a lot of stuff, but it's just because no one quite knew what was going to happen. Um, so the match has started. Um, I've chucked the feeder, it's normally a good start employ on that, and I've had no bites at all. Um, I fed the edge straight away, I've, I always do it on there, just put one cup of ground bait in there, just because it's so shallow you'll see them coming in, nothing's coming on that. Um, and I've also been feeding meat straight away, five metres, so after 20 minutes, no bites on the feeder, quick look in the edge, no bites. Gone to five metres, and to be honest, even in evening matches, you don't catch short for a couple of hours it sometimes you do it's a lot of venues you can get a couple of early ones it doesn't seem to work there and i've dropped in on it and i've caught one straight away about five pound six pound maybe dropped back in had another one about eight pound and i thought this might be all right actually um and then i've foul hooked one lost it and then i've not had another bite on it um and all the while i've been pinging some six mil pellets out on the pole line so i've gone out on that slapped it in couple after five or ten minutes of slapping about i've had my first one about three pound um then i've had another one straight after then missed a couple of bites um and then that was it i couldn't get a bite anywhere and i've, I've not actually caught anything for everyone had a few fish early and then no one's caught anything they just i think it first match everyone feeding and starting at the same time they've just completely spooked away from it um I sat there flogging away trying to catch shallow for a bit and there just weren't any signs it was like I say it was flat calm they didn't really want to know um so in the end i've gone back on the feeder and i've i've, I've caught one on it. it wasn't great though i caught one straight away and then nothing um tried short again tried the edge nothing and uh i've gone back shallow and first literally straight away you get i got a bite but then nothing and and that just set the tone for the match to be honest the fish didn't want to settle in that um they were up in the water because it was so hot they didn't want to settle on like with there being no ripple so that was basically my match um i caught what i only had one more bite short which was from a broom there's some big broom in there this was a smaller one about two and a half pound um and then it's just been a case of alternating the feeder go on the pole slap it catch one and you knew you wouldn't get another one then that would spook them off um so it's just been doing that casting the feeder out and 
I did catch four or five on the feeder, and they were a better stamp actually uh, than normal. They were like four or five pound, and then just when you saw that there, you thought there was one in your peg on the pole, just going and slapping, catching it quick, and then leaving it again, letting another one come in, and that was my match. And <laughs> to be honest, I show, showed a bit of uh, rustiness with a clicker because I clicked ninety five pound. There are net limits. Um, and I actually had 117, I was so far out, um, and I've had a load knocked off, and I should have been second in the match, and I got a load knocked off, and I only got a section win in the end. Um, but I was really happy with the day, I felt like I'd learnt a lot, I knew if I faced with those conditions again, don't waste too much time short, they just don't seem to come in there if it's flat calm, even though it's deep, they just don't want to know. Um, just alternating between the feeder and the pole would be the way to go for me um, as I did touch on if the wind wasn't so bad out the waggler would have been awesome but it was really ripping through at like past 18 meters and I wanted to fish it a bit further I've tried it a few times and, and it was just going through and it's just a waste of time you need to keep it when I do the video about it, you need to keep the line tight and it was the wind was blowing everywhere and it I just row it off. It wasn't no good. Um, but I say I learnt a lot from it. And I was really, really happy. I've had, like I say, I would have weighed if I'd have got my nets right, £117. And I don't think anyone along our bank, bar in the end peg, who had £80, no one's had more than £40. So I was miles clear along our side, which bodes well for the festival. Um, peg 20 up on the sort of the end looking down the lake with the wind going up there he had a nice ripple he's annihilated the lake with 155 pound it's not normally the best of areas up there but the wind was right and he had a little bit of room because it's not so good they did leave a couple of pegs out up there it's made all the difference on a hard day he's just fished short all day um had a lovely day so well done to him i don't know his name unfortunately and i think 100 and six pound was next so like I say I would have been second but I've, I've had a lot of weight knocked off um, but it was nice to be back on the bank learnt a lot from it took a lot away from it um, which leads us on to the next match where I've drawn it was an evening match we fish half four till half eight so it's still a lot, decent length for match um, and I've drawn the same peg again which was nice I still I'd actually left all my rigs on my top kits and just put them away so I didn't even have to plumb up um so i've got all the same kit out again and i've started the match exactly the same fed the i fed put a cup down the edge um and some meat fed meat short started on the feeder again no bites um looked um looked shallow and not had a bite which was which seemed weird to be honest because it was a bit cooler but there was a guy on four nearly opposite me in the pegs I'd wanted to be on. He started catching shallow straight away and he's caught on it all night. And he was always in the lead. Um, he seemed to be getting one all every chuck. They were smaller fish, as they sometimes can be, but he was really catching well. Um, and the first sign I've actually seen, I've seen one swell down the edge after about 20 minutes, which is why I always like to put that cup there. It, uh, it just gives you a head start. You know when something's there. You've not ruined your peg. There's not tons of bait, but there's enough to see when they're coming in. And with it being an evening match, um, it's always worth a try. Um, what I haven't mentioned, it was completely different tonight. It was overcast. There was a good wind coming through the peg, like short. And my reaction was short and the edge was going to work because there was some cover. It was the time of night. Um, so I've gone in on the edge and I've caught two in two puts for probably £15 and then not had another sign. And I've actually not seen another fish down there till the last half hour of the match. Uh, so I've dropped in short on meat, had a carp straight away. I thought, yes, this is lovely. Um, and then I've had a bream about £5. And then I've had another bream and then I've had another bream. And I thought, there are quite a few in there. There's not that many, but I thought... Maybe I'm going to catch a load of bream tonight. And then I didn't catch any more. And I started to get pestered with roach and stuff. Even with 8 mil meat. 
uh, double eight mil meat even. So I've put another big cup of hemp and meat like I've talked about before on it. Um, spent some time shallow and I've, I've only caught one and I was getting a bit frustrated now because he was still catching across. Um, tried to feed her again, nothing. And it's just been a case of I've left them for a bit. I've come back on the pole, caught one short, um, but the roach is still a nuisance. So I've just cut the hemp out, really started to feed lots of eight mils, eight mil meat. Um, and I've started to catch all right. I've had a really good run. I've caught five in five puts and they were all like eight to 12 pound proper fish. Um, and then it was just a case of resting it. Um, like I say, I had two down the edge late on. The, the thing I did find, which I wasn't really expecting, I've chucked the bomb, because I had my bomb rod set up, I've chucked it over my pole line in the like 16 foot of water and I've caught three straight away on it. Not big fish, but definitely something worth wearing, bearing in mind for the future. There are fish, I'd seen a bit of fizzing. They, are, they do go down, obviously. That's something I've learned. Um, but I've just had steady runs and I've had two or three late on, on the meat short again. And I thought I might have just have caught Adam that was across from me up. Uh, and he's weighed 140 pounds and I've weighed 158. Uh, I've only had 15 fish for that. They've been, and there's been two or three small ones in it. So, yeah. So I was happy I'd sorted the meat line out with this. The edge still wasn't going quite right. Um, they don't seem to be coming in there at the moment. I don't know why. No one's really caught a lot, but again, learnt from it. Won the match, so it was nice to get a w another win under the belt and in my second match back, so that was good. And then we moved on to Saturday, and I've drawn peg 29 and the peg next to it. Now, the wind today was horrendous. It had got really bad the last hour on the evening match, and it was still coming straight across the peg. Rain, it was really cold, um, just wasn't nice to be honest i was fishing with a woolly hat on for the first couple of hours um which i never thought i'd be saying in june um so tactics have changed a little bit for this match again this is what i'm trying to show you we're talking like the wind was bad it was going to rule out fishing shallow on the pole um you were never ever going to fish a waggler um because it just wasn't going to sit there. The wind was coming straight across us. So I've left that in the bag, left my shallow rigs in the bag. I've actually only got my margin pole out. Um, and I've just had the three rigs for fishing short with me. I have changed the rigs. I've had a 4.14, a 4.16, and then a 4.18 for the bagging rig. Um, and I expected, because I caught so well on it the night before, I expected meat line to be good. They're obviously in that sort of depth. Um, I've plumbed up an edge to my right, found the same sort of depth. I've come just come a little bit further out into another sort of four to six inches deeper. I just felt with it being cooler, they might be that bit further down. The method over, I have, again, I've just clipped it up a bit further back, so I was in a touch deeper water. Um, and the only other option I had today, it is that sort of venue where you don't catch on one thing all day, and I wanted another option. Um, so I've decided to fish the bomb, but actually ping for a bomb line this time eight mils um the only problem was i wanted to sort of ping them over three quarters of over so i was in that same six or seven foot that i was on with the the short pole line but you were never going to group pellets there um not the eight mils i just couldn't get them there i had a quick go and it wasn't working so i've actually pinged them halfway to the island so i was right in the deep water which was a bit of a it was one of them, so I've decided my match would be short, method and short, and my backup line, just to get an odd bite and rest those two lines, would be pinging 8 mils down the middle. And I was going to be really aggressive. Some The 8 mil catalyst pellets, the spotted fins, I really love them. Um, really feeding heavy, because I wanted a lot of bait to go down and try and keep them down. Um, I've started on the method not caught anything the guy next to me on 28 tom he's had two early ones on it and then caught nothing there was just nothing being caught around the lake to be honest uh, i couldn't see john wink up he was further up he'd drawn the same peg he'd been on the evening match the night before um where he hadn't he'd struggled a bit but he, he actually quite fancied it because there were fish on the feeder there and on a windy day um so i couldn't see him but most other people no one was catching anything to be honest it was fishing rock hard um Big job in temperature, turn them off. Tried short, no bites. 
so I've gone on the bomb and I've started to catch a few actually it was, it was surprising I've caught four in four chucks but they were like three to four pound they weren't the big fish I'd caught the night before they don't seem to be in that thing and it was really frustrating because it was slow and you then you'd get a couple but they were, you're getting odd liners and you're seeing an odd swirl in your pellets and I was just thinking I really want to fish a waggler here but the wind was wrong for it. I've, in the end I've tried putting a really big like like you'd fish at um, Boddington's and stuff for fishing at 20 meters trying to get any presentation and it's just well I sacked it off after 10 minutes but that's where the fish were they're up in the water so I really piled the pellets in I've kept trying short um, tried the method a few more times nothing um, so I just knew to get me head down on the bomb and for four hours they're six hour matches and for four four and a bit hours four and a quarter hours I got up to about 15 fish again I've got about 60 pound and I thought I'm doing really well here but I, no one was catching um, and then all of a sudden the matches just started to fall apart I, I've had a disastrous last two hours I've not actually put fish in the net um, I think what's happened there's where I've been trying to take them down and feeling so much bait when they have actually gone down I still think it was the right thing to do but this, this little things I tweak with it and this is what I'm on about learning from because um, they're smaller fish I started to foul hook them on the bomb which I've, I've never had that problem before normally you get an odd big and come in and suck it and there was quite a few small ones there so you foul looking them I've lost three or four um, and then all of a sudden I've, I've lost one in a snag that I didn't even know was there I'd, I think it's a brolly or something and once one had gone in there and sort of dislodged it a little bit I've lost three whole sets of gear on it um, and then, then it started, we've had a thunderstorm and the wind's turned coming straight out as it's been horrible. But I could actually chuck a waggler then and I've chucked that and it's blown, been, but it's been blown back towards me. A foul look free on that, lost all of them. Um, I'd say I should have just, I've tried chasing around doing so many things, I should have just sat there and fish, just kept fishing away on the bomb and I would have caught a few more and got me head back in gear, landed a couple, I'd have been all right. Uh, but I've wasted a bit of time fishing short. Finally had a bite on the pole short with half hour to go. And it's been a big and it's been about £15 in the mouth. And that's come off at the net. And then I foul up one with five minutes to go and that's come off. Um, and I've weighed £60. Um, the guy next to me, Tom, I'd been well ahead of him all day. And he's just plugged away, caught a couple on the bomb. He'd seen me doing it, so he'd started it. I've, I'd caught a lot more than him on it. But he's just plugged away, caught those couple of extra and then he's hooked two on the pole short um the last one he literally hooked with about a second of the match to go um and that fish has beat me for the section so it's a bit annoying that's 60 pound i've lost a lot of fish late on a few different things from my setups i'm going to look at as i'll as i'll touch on in a minute when we look back over it all uh so i should have won my section there 90 but john had john had won it fished got a lot of fish on the feeder where we hadn't gotten where we were He's had £130. Peg 8, the flyer, has had 92 Then there's been a couple of 80s. Um, so the 92 was easily in reach. I fished a terrible match the last couple of hours. My head went. I was I was just trying to win the match too much, and I should have just took it steady. And But we live and learn. It, it didn't work on the day. Um, so I learned, probably learnt more from that match than the others, though. So it's, I'm still not unhappy with it. But it would have been nice for a little pickup as always. So I say the conditions, even though we've been on the same peg, the conditions completely dictate what you're doing. Um, sadly, the last day they dictated too much because the fish were sat off bottom, um, the bigger fish, and we just couldn't fish for them. The other bank, you would have been able to do it a bit better, I think. But where we were, you couldn't. And like I say it was really windy. Um, but loads to take away from it. So we'll go into that see what I have learned and what I'm going to take forward to the festival. First of all, the biggest thing I learned the first day is if it's flat calm, that short line and the edge. It, 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 some venues you still catch down the edge if you've got cover and that because it's so shallow and it is because it's deep. It's not as coloured as some lakes. They ain't going to come in there if it's shallow, if it's if it's really hot, they just don't seem to come in there. So I know to ignore that. That meat line, 
they don't really seem to want to come there even though it's in six seven foot walk they they still don't want us a team to come short if you need that you need a good wind on it for that so i know that i could sort of remember that um the shallow line again they don't settle it's not about long lining it's not that they're not coming near your pole they just completely back away if you can fish a waggler that would be great um but again you need the, the right conditions for the waggler um the method is good for a few fish especially when it's hot like that because they just sit in the shallow water by the island as far away from you so I would definitely keeping that in mind um what did i learn from the evening match well my meat setup is about right. I'm quite happy with that. Um, the hemp definitely seems to work, but I've never had problems with roach, the roach and rudd like I did that night. Uh, you've got to change your feeding around quite a bit, and especially when you get a few there, I really have to change my feeding about um, just to keep them on the bottom because it is quite deep. Um, being quite aggressive when there's a ripple on the water is really good, so I'm definitely happy with that. Um, the last day, like I say, I've learnt tons from it. Um, if it's a bit harder, if it goes a bit cooler, I've got to cut back on the feeding on the short line because they just don't come there till late. Um, and I think I've, the two of them, like I say, they weren't feeding properly. Um, and actually speaking to people afterwards, everyone had lost loads of fish. They seemed to be hooking them just around the mouths. They weren't feeding properly. The cooler made it all weird. But I think definitely cutting back, whereas the night before, lots of bait worked you know, the evening before and it's always worked for me before i think being a lot more sparing if it's hot or um if it's if, if it's generally just fishing a bit harder just just cutting back a, a little bit trickling a little bit of bait in and trying to nab one or two there late on is is better than trying to catch a big weight there um the bomb well I didn't think of catching that depth of water, but it is definitely definitely a viable method. Like I say, I was doing really well on it and keeping ahead of people. Um, perhaps some, eight, some 11 mil pellets I need to get in my bag. I think it would be better if I fished it that bit further, further over and some 11 mils with a bit of oil on them. Just to give them even more weight, I'd be able to get them that bit further and I think that could be a winner. Um, the waggler is definitely going to play a part if i can if the weather's right for it there's so many fish on that waggler line you can see them topping all day um feeder i'm still not quite sure if i'm doing it right um just none of us had any bites on it but i, I keep thinking to myself with meat working so well maybe a ground bait feeder with riddled meat in um so you can really build some bait because what does seem to happen is the fish just seem to patrol the island and You'll have a good run. I did it on the Saturday, the first match. You'll go and have four or five like straight away, and then then like everything else, they back away. Um, so I think they're setting a ground bait feeder up on a big rod and really piling some bait in at times, ground bait, like you do in the edge. Once you've caught a few, so so you can come off it and they can sort of drift back onto it. That's something I'm definitely going to try out before the festival starts. Um, but yeah, the bomb, a few different, let's like say, 11 mil pellets could perhaps work. I definitely think, I've never had the problem with losing fish like I did. And they, well, they weren't having it properly. But because they're a bit smaller fish, I think I need to change my setup with it slightly. Um, I always use a, a bigger, I'm not going to go into rigs and everything, because I'm going to do a video on it. But um, I always measure my hairs, and I fish quite a long hair anyway, but I think an even longer hair, for these smaller ones would be the way forward because i think it's like when you fish on the pole with eight mil pellets i think with them small mouths a lot of the pellets even though they're in the mouth were hanging outside and i think they're like i was fishing double eight mil pellets at times and they're banging against them and knocking them off a bit and i just think an even longer hair where they can get it right back in and the pellets in here before you you hook them um so you get a real good hook hold i don't want to be hooking them in the throat but you're not going to do that but it's just so i'll get that little bit better hook hold i think that is a way forward um so there's, there's so much you can learn from Ple pleasure fishing is a different one if i've got a festival or something if i've never been there a pleasure session can be good just to go and try a few different methods out but generally you can speak to people in advance and they'll they'll give you a heads up um 
but fishing a match on a venue, you just learn so much. So I'd always advise it if you don't know a venue, you've got a big match or a festival, make, try and make the time to get a match or two in because you will learn so much. Um, especially if you get one of your mates to fish it as well. Two heads are always better than one. Um, so I'm going to have, I've got the chance for two or three more matches before the festival starts down there. So I'm hopefully going to get that lake sorted. That is the difficult one. The other two lakes I am a bit happier with. They're a bit more standard carp fishing, a bit shallower. But this, there's a lot to take into account. So I will keep you updated with those. I will do an actual live report on each match after this but it just seemed perfect tonight with what i'm going to choose to do on different days on the same peg depending on conditions so i've done it all as one um i will get the pellet waggler and bomb done soon i will get the seat box one done soon let me know if there's anything else you want anything else you want covering and i'll get it done as soon as i can for you thanks very much for watching cheers